Hi and welcome back to another lab. This is module number 14 and module number 14 is about building serverless architecture and microservices. It's a guided lab for module 14 which is implementing a serverless architecture and uh, this is our lab today. Uh, let's try to understand what are we actually trying to do in implementing a serverless architecture. So in this guided lab, we'll explore how to design and implement serverless application on AWS. Uh, one that runs entirely without managing the servers. You learn how to use AWS Lambda, API Gateway, and Amazon S3, in addition to DynamoDB, to build a modern, scalable, and cost-effective application. By the end of the lab, you'll have hands-on experience on creating a real-world serverless web application where the front end is hosted on S3, the business logic runs in Lambda, data is stored on DynamoDB, and the entire system is connected through an API gateway. Now this module will help you in understanding how microservices fit into serverless design and how AWS automatically handles scaling, availability and fault tolerance while allowing the developers to focus purely on applying logic. So there are six different tasks in this lab. As you can see that we'll be writing a code or pasting it on our ID environment and stuff. And we need to download a couple of files here and uh, uh, we'll walk along and we'll try to understand that why are we doing these steps and what is the main purpose of following those steps. Now, first of all, um, make sure that you prepare your environment accordingly. And then we'll start with task number one, which is creating Lambda function to load data. So in this step, we'll create an AWS Lambda function that automatically loads data into an our DynamoDB table. This Lambda function will act as a backend logic um, triggered whenever a new object is uploaded into our S3 bucket. Further, we'll define the runtime environment, add necessary uh, identity and access management permissions, and write a short piece of code that reads import data and loads it into our database. So once we are done with this step, we'll be able to have a fully configured Lambda function ready to process and insert data in our database automatically. So um, we are going to start this one by starting the function name, which is load inventory. And then I would highly recommend to maintain notes on a notepad file as we always do. And uh, so that we don't have to switch in between the instructions and the lab. So let's get started. So we'll start with Lambda. You can see a link over here. Click on it. If it's not there, you can search it and open Lambda. So as written in the instructions, the first step is to create a function. So we'll do that first. In order to create the function, click on create function. And here we'll write the function name. In runtime, we'll select Python 3.8 as mentioned in the instructions. If you don't see it over here, I would highly recommend to go for the most recent one. So I'll go for Python 3.12. Rather, I can see 3.13, which is latest supported. So we can select 3.13 here. After that, click on change default execution code. And in this one, select use existing role and then select the Lambda inventory role. After that, just click create function. Now you can dismiss this one for the time being. Now let's try to understand what we did. So we actually selected a Lambda load inventory role this would give the Lambda function permission to access Amazon S3 and DynamoDB. Then they are saying select this Lambda function PY, which is a Python script, select all and replace it with the code that you can see on your instructions manual. So we pasted this source code over there and then we'll examine the code by performing these operations. Once that's done, simply click on deploy. So as you can see that it's deploying the code and it's updating the function load inventory. And now it has updated the load function in the inventory. 
Now that concludes our task one. Now in task number two, we'll have to configure an Amazon S3 event. So in this step, we'll configure our Amazon S3 event notification that triggers our Lambda function whenever a new file is uploaded to the S3 bucket. We'll simplify or we'll specify the event type such as the object created and link it to the Lambda function we just created. This allows our application to automatically react to incoming files without any manual intervention. Now we'll go to our S3 bucket for task number two and uh, we'll create a bucket. Next they are saying to name it anything. So I'm naming it as inventory 10825. Then we'll not make any other changes here. We'll just create a bucket. Next we'll click on the inventory bucket which is just created. Next you'll click on properties and then we'll scroll down and you are going to click on event notification. So create an event notification. Now here we'll name it as load inventory. It's copied from the instruction manual. So make sure that you are naming it exactly the same way. Then under event types, select all objects create events. Then we'll scroll down and make sure that you have Lambda function selected here and we are going to select Lambda inventory here. And after that, we'll hit save changes. Now, if you'll go to your buckets, you'll see inventory, the one that we created, click on that one. And if you'll click properties, you'll be able to see the region, its ARN number and creation date, etc. So it means that when an object is created in the bucket, this configuration tells Amazon S3 to invoke the load inventory Lambda function that you created earlier. Now we'll start working on test number three, which is testing the loading process. So in this step, we'll test the serverless data loading process by uploading a new object into our S3 bucket. So when the new file is uploaded, the S3 event will trigger our Lambda function which will read the files contents and insert the data in our database. After completing this step, we would have a verified um, that S3 Lambda DynamoDB integration works perfectly fine and the uploaded data should appear in our database console. So before starting this step, I would highly recommend to download these files and save it on your computer. Then we'll choose the objects and we'll update these files one by one. Once files are downloaded, you'll go back to objects and you'll upload the files. So you'll upload them one by one by clicking on add files. So I have selected all files and you can check them all and select upload. So all of these files are successfully uploaded on our bucket. We'll go to our instruction manual and click on AWS details. And we'll copy this address from here or you can right click on this one and click go. So here, as you can see that it has uploaded the files and if I'm going to select, for example, Karachi from here, you'll be able to see the data and if I'm selecting any other cities in this one, you are able to see the related data for them. Now we'll start our test number four, which is configuring notifications. So in this step, we'll set up Amazon SNS, which is simple notification service to send alerts whenever new data is processed. We'll start by creating a new SNS topic, configure the subscription, for example, using an email address and confirm the subscription request. And after completing this step, we would be able to have SNS notification systems ready to broadcast updates to the subscribers or users. Now for task four, we'll go to our simple notification service. So you can search SNS and here we'll create a topic called no stock. This name was provided in the instructions manual. Then press next. We'll keep it as standard. We are not making any other changes. Just click create topic. After that, we'll click on create subscription. And then in the protocol, we'll select email. After that, enter the email address you want to use and click create subscription. 
After that, we'll work on task number five by creating a Lambda function to send notifications. So in this step, we'll create another AWS Lambda function, this time to send a notification through the SNS topic we just configured. So this function will publish a message to the SNS topic whenever a new data is successfully loaded into the Dynamo database. We'll write a short piece of code that would format and send messages, and we'll grant it to the necessary permissions to interact with our SNS. As you can see, we are creating a function here, and then we are naming it as check stock. For step five, we'll go back to our Lambda function, and then click on your functions. Make sure that you are in your load inventory. So we'll go back and then we'll create a function here. We'll name it as check stock, which was mentioned in our instructions manual. Here also, we'll select the runtime environment as Python 3.13. Then click on change default execution to use existing. And in the existing one, we are going to use the stock role. After that, click on create function. Again, we can dismiss this one. Again, we'll click on Lambda function, select all, and we can remove it from here. Go back to the instructions manual, and now we are going to copy this code again. Exactly like last time, we'll paste the code here, go down, and click on deploy. After that, we'll go up and click on Add Trigger. In the trigger configuration, we'll look for DynamoDB, which is our database. Type inventory here, and you'll be able to see the inventory ARN number. Select that one. And after that, simply hit Add. After that, in next step, they're just saying to upload the files again on your S3 bucket and refresh mm -hmm. it and then see it on the dashboard if you can see the files or not. Since we uploaded the files there earlier, so you can see the files here and try to check it on the dashboard as well, which is this one. If you'll select, for example, again, Karachi, you'll be able to see the count and the item stores. So less of the information that there. So in this lab, we learn how to design and deploy a fully serverless application using a key AWS service, which is Lambda, S3, DynamoDB, API Gateway, and SNS. You have seen how these services integrate seamlessly to create an event-driven architecture that scales automatically, reduces cost, and eliminate the need to manage servers. That's it for today. Thank you very much.